It's my great honor and pleasure to be here to talk about one of my favorite topics, game and innovation. So before we get started, I'll show you a video to uh, give you a context of what I, what, what I do and I work on. enjoyed it. This, so this is kind of games that when I say games that uh, we develop at our company uh, as a part of providing entertainment and, and play experience for our, uh, for our players. So let me get started with talking about importance of play. Anthropologists and developmental theorists do not doubt the significant role of play in human revolution. Higher animals and humans come into the world with incompletely formed neuromuscular systems and behavior repertoires. To become competent adults, they must exercise and learn and practice behaviors essential to their survival later in life, which is where play comes in. Without play, the adult animals would be poorly equipped for the tasks of life. Young animals play more than older ones as they have, to, they have more to learn. Predatory animals play at chasing and stalking on prey-like objects, whereas scavenging animals play at fleeing and dodging. There is a rich a literature of studies about bonobos playing to develop social skills. Our children play with a similar category of skills as bonobos, along with some uniquely human skills. These human skills include language play, constructive play, and playful use of mental abilities such as memory, imagination, attention, and reasoning. Play is crucial for survival. The very reason for us to have periods of youth is in order to play, which supplements insufficient hereditary endowment with individual experience, preparing our young for the coming tasks of life. Play also is a means of reducing hostility and promoting cooperation. Anthropologists report regularly that hunter-gatherer societies are the most egalitarian, non-hierarchical, and highly cooperative societies that have been found anywhere. The hunter-gatherer way of life requires an intense degree of cooperation and sharing, which is incompatible with struggles for dominance. To reach this level of cooperation, hunter-gatherers have to develop cultural practices that suppress the drive to dominance, which is accomplished through play. And games have been an important part of play for humans for more than 5,000 years. Senet is one of the oldest known board games. Fragmentary boards have been found in the first dynasty burials in Egypt, dating back to 3100 BC. Paintings of this ancient game can be found in multiple tombs, including the third dynasty tomb of Hesse, and ones from the fifth and sixth dynasties. With such an important role to our species, play is an engine of innovation. As art, philosophy, and literature push the forefront for development of human intelligence, capabilities, and imagination, play is crucial for quantum jump of enlightenment and social breakthroughs. In terms of innovation, novel objects and technology have always been a cornerstone of play. This image shows uh, a stork from Bronze Age 
which allegedly dates back to around 1500 to 1200 BC. It was found in an area where Indo-European tribes inhabited and found along with other archaeological artifacts. Bronze was the most scarce and advanced material of the time, and toys are often found in the form of weapon-like objects, such as sling slingshots and bows. Novel objects nowadays are computers, video game consoles, smartphones, and the internet, forming the cornerstone of modern play. Just the term video games tend to elicit a strong response from audiences. Without trying to stereotype, those of the older generations tend to think of video games as children's toy, despite having several video game apps on their smartphones. Whereas the younger generations see video games as a central part of their day-to-day -day life. The US alone has more than 166 million adult gamers, with a near even split between men and women. And while video games have only been around some four-ish years, video games are an evolution of play and playing, a trait as old as life on this planet. At NCSoft, we started our company in 1997. I'm sure many of you in the audience remember what a barren place the internet was like back then. According to the US Census Bureau, less than 20% of households had internet access in 1997. Very few people had email addresses, and the dominant internet browser at the time was not even Netscape. We were using Mosaic. But despite being the figurative stone age of the internet, NCSoft and a few other companies already saw what could be done with sparsely existing bits and pieces of nascent technology. So we designed a virtual playground where people interact in the world using 3D graphics interface over an internet connection. Graphics played another important role in the evolution of play for video games. That game and a few others like it, at the time became one of the first virtual worlds. Worlds that proved that there was a market for a social network well before social networks became mainstream services. And as that 20-year-old game has grown well beyond the typical three to five years an online game is expected to last, we've seen a lot of groundbreaking technologies adopted in a more widespread manner. It is only fitting to go back and consider the role of game and play as a crucial means of achieving learning and innovation. Video game play also is a driving component of technology development. It is widely known industry norm that people upgrade their computers when a new computer game comes out, especially in countries where PC games are dominant form of game in the market. As the video games push the boundaries of play with better graphics, bigger worlds, and more engagement, so too must technology keep up with demand. Chip makers develop and push the edge of computing with multi-core CPUs, which are then tested by gamers, who push them through the paces as they notice the speed and latency crucial to playing competition within games. Video games were where virtual economy and free-to-play business models were introduced in the first place. It was one of the first marketplaces where online payment systems were adopted and tested across the board. Video games are giving inspirations to design of digital currency and bitcoins today. The jump from 2D to 3D graphics for video games in the late 90s ushered in a technology rush to create powerful and standalone graphics processing units. As those GPUs became more powerful and more affordable to keep up with the consumer demand, it wasn't long until AI researchers tapped into GPU power to advance AI research in the late 2000s. 
Between the increased CPU and GPU computing power of available machines, the increase in both bandwidth and at-home access for broadband internet, video game provided us with a technological forecast for an environment that allowed AI to flourish. While AI is finally taking hold on a commercial level with the advent of tech giants and personal assistants, those who played video games have been interacting with AI long before Siri came out. At NCSoft, we recognize that video games are a great platform for AI technology development. Any in-game character, monster, or creature that are not controlled by another player is powered by an AI that makes decisions based on its sensory inputs. It adopts its strength or combat strategy based on the opponent player's play patterns and skill mastery of in-game controls. Different NPC monsters spawn based on the internet and play pattern of individual players. We were blessed to have all the research, data, and the platform to test these algorithms right in our own virtual digitalized world. Looking to the future and all the anticipated technology development and innovation ahead of us, we see that advancement of display and data visualization will bring us an opportunity to advance our play experiences and related technology. VR and AR have been buzzwords for quite a while already. And we have witnessed a number of new innovations from those developers and hardware makers who are trying to create a truly immersive platform. From some of the early games made with VR in mind, we see that the intensity of emotion and experience is something that was never imaginable without new display technology. We've already talking to researchers today to use nanotech to create a true holographic display. And while we're still in the early days of technology, the future that it opens for entertainment and video game options are limitless. More sociologically informed research has sought to move away from simplistic ideas of gaming as either negative or positive, but rather seeking to understand its role and location in the complexities of everyday life. Famously, an MMO inadvertently turned into a predictive model for the Center for Disease Control. When players use an in-game exploit to spread a deadly infection in the game's heavily populated areas. Where I'm going with this is that video games can be the compass direction for where future technology is going. There is no larger market more engaged with the latest technology than the video game industry. And because of our innate desire to play and our obsession with what's new and novel, video games are the perfect indicator for where future technology can go. 20 years ago, I had to buy time sludge on a communal supercomputer to run my neural network algorithms. Since then, computational techniques have advanced tremendously, but most people in the field agree that the availability of data, storage, and processing power made the proliferation and ubiquity of artificial intelligence today possible. The, idea, <clears throat> the ideas and intent were there, but being able to sense and iterate made the recent burst of technology a reality. Given all the advancements coming from MIT.nano, it's not hard to imagine a world within a decade where nanotechnology is so precise and keep, can move so much data over networks that will, <clears throat> that will be able to create sensors that observe and transmit real-time real -time haptic feedback with little latency. We've already seen several prototypes in the game industry that allow players to feel more immersed in game with vests that stimulate taking in-game damages. And while those solutions are fairly rudimentary as of today, a research team earlier this year published their findings of creating a flexible and wearable piezoelectric sensor that would connect humans to machine via AR-VR interface. Nanotechnology is paused to offer these opportunities for those 
through establishment and capacity that is available through resources like MIT Nano. Nanoparticles are already being used outside of a laboratory environment to create holographic displays. Today, we can only imagine what impact that could be to the world of entertainment and immersive storytelling when such immersion is available without peripheral devices such as goggles or helmets or even being forced to sit stationary in front of a screen. Responsive environments that can talk to us, multidimensional sensory data that can travel and be delivered to the end users through communication networks and displays that can process and construct an order of magnitude more dense data than any commercially available display out there are all the possibilities that we are very excited to see and will have a tremendous first-hand impact on designing entertainment. We look to you and the future to help provide the public with opportunities to experience all these wonderful new technologies and create entirely new constructs in which we all will play and grow together. At MIT Nano Immersion Lab, we're creating a playground for researchers to unlock the next nanotechnology breakthrough for play. Whether it's creating a next generation of VR headsets using QE LEDs, nanosensors that allow, us, allow for full body control and interaction within the virtual world, or thoughts far beyond this. We want the Immersion Lab to focus on what I've been talking about, play. Nanotechnology is the forefront of what could be the next big social breakthrough for our species. Thank you for your attention.